Everyone's using the wrong visual settings for chapter 3, and I'm about to show you how to access hidden settings, why you shouldn't cap your frame rate, and all the best visual settings for chapter 3. Starting with rendering modes, performance mode is still by far the best. There's a clear decrease in input delay on performance mode when compared to DX11 and DX12. However, on the back end, performance mode still actually uses DX11 to render the game. So when you're on DX11 mode, the settings that you change carry over to performance mode, even though you can't change them from the settings menu on performance mode. So in order to get the best settings, we have to swap to DX11, change all our settings, and then change back to performance mode. If you don't believe me, look at this. The last line here shows your monitor's frame rate and NVIDIA's reflex low latency settings. If reflex low latency is off, both will say off. If it's on, the U will say on, and if you use on plus boost, which you should, the U and B will both say on. Now when I swap my game back to performance mode, both of them are still on, telling us NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency is still active even on performance mode. To understand what NVIDIA Reflex does, you have to understand how your PC renders frames. In short, your CPU computes the frame, then sends it to your GPU's buffer so the GPU can render it once your monitor is ready to show the next frame. But if your monitor's refresh rate was lower than how fast your CPU is sending frames, the buffer would get backed up so the frames you see are actually old frames. So what people started doing was capping their frame rate to whatever their monitor was set to so that the GPU's buffer stays clear and always renders the most up-to-date frame. What NVIDIA Reflex does is forcibly keep the GPU buffer clear so that no matter your frame rate, your GPU always renders the most recent frame. So there's no reason to cap your frames anymore with the setting on, but people still do it because most players have no idea how NVIDIA Reflex works. Uncapping your frame rate with NVIDIA Reflex will lower your input delay regardless of your monitor's refresh rate. So make sure you're on DX11 so we can see all the settings. We'll change back to performance mode at the very end. Now let's go top to bottom. You always want to be on full screen because windowed full screen uses the windows compositor and that adds latency. And you should use whatever your native resolution is, don't use stretch res. I'm making a full video about that right now, subscribe with Nodi Zone so you don't miss it. For color settings, it's very dependent on the monitor you use. The settings that look best for me might look completely different on your monitor, but in general you should use whatever settings make the game most clear to you on your monitor. What's easy for someone else to see might be hard for you to see. For the graphics quality, you want 3D resolution at 100% and view distance at medium. View distance doesn't affect whether or not you can see enemies, but it does affect how far you can see build and loot. On low you can see builds from 270 meters and loot from 200 meters. On medium, builds are visible from 360 meters and loot from 270 meters. And on far and epic, it's 550 for builds and 405 for loot. Regardless of your view distance, you can't shoot enemies that are over 280 meters away. This makes medium ideal since it's far enough to let you always see the loot when dropping in, but low enough that you're not going to be rendering a bunch of extra builds from people you can't shoot anyway. If you really struggle with frames in endgame, you can turn it to low, but keep in mind you won't be able to see loot spawns like launch pads until you get a lot closer. Everything else gets turned off or as low as possible to get the most FPS possible. Time for advanced graphics. V-Sync and Motion Blur both lower your FPS, so turn them off. You can show FPS if you want, but it clutters the screen so it's better off. You always want to allow multi-threaded rendering unless you're on single core hardware, but pretty much every CPU made in the last decade has multiple cores. GPU crash debugging, latency markers, and latency flash are only for troubleshooting, so turn them off. Reflex low latency goes to on plus boost. On mode just keeps the GPU buffer clear like I explained before, but on plus boost also forces your GPU to run at full speed even when it's not under load, so that when you do need your GPU, it's already going full speed to render frames. Now going into the game UI tab, there's a bunch of clutter that we need to turn off. The less stuff on screen, the easier it is to see opponents in hectic fights, so anything that's useless we're turning off. Spectator count, off. Reticle, player health, resources, minimap, and quick bar all need to be on. Target info shows how much health builds have, so we definitely need to keep this on. Pick up loot stream shows you how much loot you just picked up, but you can always see the total in your inventory so it's useless. Off. Map and backpack keys? Off. Elimination feed is on. When you're third partying fights, it's super useful to see the elimination feed to know when to engage. Latency debug stats? Off. Net debug stats show your ping, and while it's really inaccurate, it does show you when your lobby's getting really laggy. In really stacked games, I know the lobby's getting laggy when it shows I have zero ping, cause there's no way I'm getting zero ping from a thousand miles away from the server. On. Quest progress we can turn off, and reticle ammo indicator shows next to your reticle how many bullets you have left. It can be useful if you aren't used to checking your ammo count at the bottom right, but it's blocking right next to your reticle, and having anything block the screen next to your reticle is bad, so if you need it you can keep it, but I turn it off. Control prompts off, and runtime performance stats also off. The HUD scale changes how large all the UI is. By default it's huge, but you also don't want it so small you can't see it quickly. Around 75% is a good medium. Now that we've changed all our settings, we have to change back to performance mode and restart the game. The only new option we have now is meshes, high versus low. Low meshes actually have a negligible effect on your input delay, so both high and low meshes are a viable option. You can choose whichever you prefer, but if you want the specifics into the pros and cons of each option, I have an entire video dedicated to that here, so go ahead and watch that if you haven't. 
Farewell.